Well, good morning and um, welcome to this service today, uh, this Sunday morning service in, uh, uh, in Maryborough Free Church here. I uh, hope you're all well as you, you tune in from your, your homes today and uh, as, you, uh, as we together we, we worship God. Um, I'm just going to uh, begin uh, this morning by, by praying, so let's, let's just join our hearts together in uh, a word of prayer. Let, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, um, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for the, the opportunity of being able to tune in uh, from our homes as well to, <clears throat> to, uh, to watch this service um, today. Lord, we, we enter our, our third week of uh, uh, this, this virus, and uh, we continue to, to pray for your help upon our government, upon our uh, NHS, and all uh, our key workers, God, who uh, keep things running as smoothly as they can in these um, difficult times. But Lord, we're, we're here to, to worship you, and we're here to glorify you. So, Lord, help us to do that. Help us just to be still and to know that you are our God, uh, the one who is worthy of all thanks, of all praise, of all glory. Because, Lord, you are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the one who gives us Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You are the one who fills us with your Holy Spirit, and enables us to live for you, God. And Lord, that's what we want to do, is to live for you. In these days, whether there be virus or no virus, we want to live every day, God, for Jesus Christ. So help us, Lord, to get rid of these things that hinder us, those things that, Lord, prevent us from following Jesus. Lord, we want to, to bow in your presence today to confess our sins before you. Lord, because we have sinned and we, we, we do fall short of your glory, and there are things that we, we do and say that, Lord, are shameful. And therefore, God, we ask you this morning, because there's nowhere else to go but to yourself. For your word says, even though our sins be as red as scarlet, you shall make them whiter than the snow. And we bless you, Lord, that there is forgiveness with you. And so we confess our sins. Whatever they may be today, whatever idols we've been holding in our hearts, whatever we've been putting before you, God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for our pride, our self-righteousness. And have mercy on us, Lord. And today, as we read your word, and as we think about your word, it's our prayer and it's our desire that, Lord, you would open it up to us and that, Lord, we would be truly ministered to in our souls from your word. So thank you, Lord, for this time and thank you for, for all other ministers, pastors who are, are doing the same thing, Lord, and preaching uh, your word uh, and bless them, God, that together we may all rejoice and that the kingdom of God will continue to advance. And Lord, your people built up and uh, others entering the kingdom of God. That's our prayer and that's our desire. And so Lord, may these times, these special days, Lord, focus us in on yourself to, to seek you as the church of Christ, to seek you and to put you at number one place in our lives. For Lord, you are worthy. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Lord. Blessed be your name. Amen. Okay, um, our reading uh, today comes from uh, the Gospel of John and chapter 14. Uh, we were looking at John 14 uh, last week. We're going to be looking at it again this morning. So let's turn to John chapter 14. That's page 901. And we're going to read from verse 15, where Jesus says these words, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, 
even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judith, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk with much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. Amen. And we pray that God would bless that reading of his word to us. Well, <clears throat> they say there is, um, there's no place like home. And that is true, I guess, for most people. There's no place like home. We're about um, three weeks into lockdown, and I guess some of you are a bit fed up with it now, and, and some of you are feeling perhaps a bit lonely, and uh, you want to see your loved ones, you want to be with family, you want to, uh, to be out and about, you want to be at work, you want to be doing the things that you normally do from day to day, but instead we're confined pretty much to our homes for the time being. When you're limited to your home for basics, it, it's hard. And I guess all of us, I guess, have not been in this situation before. We're used to going out and about and doing what we want and going where we want. But only being able to go for, for basics, is, I guess it's a bit tough now after a few weeks. And especially if you're, you're elderly or if you've got some underlying health um, condition because you really do have to, um, to, to isolate yourself. Of course, all of us have, have to, to isolate ourselves uh, as much as possible. But those who are elderly and, 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 and not well, they especially have to avoid contact with people as much as possible. And because of this, this virus, and while being at home might give a sense of security to us, but it also might feel lonely as well. Therefore, it's for that reason that that I want to share the words of John 14, 23 with you today, <clears throat> where we read this. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, 
and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus said, we will come to him, and we will we'll love him. That is a tremendous statement, and I think it's one we need to, to pause over for a moment and to take in what is really being said here. Because Jesus is saying, Christian, you are not alone. He's saying, and I think we need to, we need to grasp this, he's saying, God lives in you. The triune God who, who is one being and, and, and three persons, Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit, lives within you. We can put it another way, perhaps. Um, the God who created this universe and everything that we see in it, in all its complexity with the things that we cannot even see, this God lives in you. You know, sometimes we take these things and we go, okay, next. No, pause, friends, and realize this God lives in you. It's outstanding. It's, that is incredible. I mean, I, I can't explain to you uh, how that works, just like I can't explain to you how the, 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 the fullness of of God dwelt in the womb of the Virgin Mary. But I know that he did because the Bible says that in Jesus Christ dwells the fullness of God. God lives in you and you live in God through faith in the Son of God. Perhaps this illustration um, might help. If I was to throw a bucket into the sea, that bucket sinks into the sea. Well, the sea is in the bucket, isn't it? But also the bucket is in the sea. And so it is with the Lord. We are in Him and He is in us. And so I want to begin working through these verses uh, with the heading, Another Helper. Another Helper. Because Jesus promises his disciples that when he returns to heaven, he would send them another helper. The Spirit of Truth. In other words, the Holy Spirit. Do you know, I think that the Holy Spirit is perhaps the, uh, the most neglected and understood person in the Holy Trinity amongst Christians. Well, the Bible teaches He is God. He is beautiful. He is your friend. He lives in you. He, he helps you. And He does so, so many things. He is God. Remember, one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in this passage in John 14, um, you have explicitly mentioned all three members of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know, Trinity simply means three in one. One God, three persons. Jesus himself makes reference to the Father, the Holy Spirit, and himself in this, uh, this passage. And you'll notice that Jesus uh, calls the Holy Spirit by personal pronouns. He uses he and, and, and him. He doesn't speak of the Holy Spirit as it or a, or a force, but he speaks about the Holy Spirit as a personal being. He uses the words he, him. He's a personal being. 
God the Holy Spirit. Now, when speaking of the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, I'm going to send you another helper in verse 16. There are two words in the Greek for another. One means another of a different kind, and the other means another of the same kind. And that is the word that Jesus uses here. That's the word that's recorded here. Another of the same kind. In other words, Jesus is saying, everything that I've been to you, he, the Holy Spirit, will be to you. All that I've been to you in this time, the Holy Spirit will be to you. The only difference was that Jesus was with them in, 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 in a physical body. But the Holy Spirit, well, he will be in you, says Jesus. He will be with you and in you. He says that to his disciples. For Jesus says in verse 17, you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. When I go, I'm sending the Spirit to you. The fact that Jesus says, you know him, means that this is something experiential. There are changes you experience in your life when the Spirit of God indwells you. If we go back into John chapter 3, where Jesus is having a conversation with uh, Nicodemus, a religious Jew, a Pharisee. He says this to him in verse 8 of chapter 3, speaking about the Holy Spirit. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. You see what the wind does. You see what the Spirit of God does. The Apostle Paul um, says this of the Spirit in Romans 8, verses 15 to 16. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You see, those who are born again, those who are saved, those who trust in Jesus, they have the Spirit in them. And this, one of the things the Spirit does, of the many things He does do, is that He witnesses with your spirit that you are a child of God. Jesus says, you know Him, for He is with you and He will be in you. And part of His being in you is He, he reminds you, he, he reveals to you he witnesses to you that you belong to God. You're a child of God. You're a, you're a son. You're a daughter. And so there is, there is communion between you and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, your Spirit and the Holy Spirit. He's letting you know you're a child of God. A couple of chapters later in John's Gospel, we read these words of Jesus in chapter 16, verses 12 to 14. I have still many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. You see, Jesus said, he would send another helper. And this helper is not less than Jesus, and he's not more than Jesus. He is God the Holy Spirit, as Jesus is God the Son. The word helper is an interesting word itself. Literally, it is paraclete. It's a compound word made up of para, which means to 
to come alongside and Kletos, which is called. And so when you put that together, you have one who is called to come alongside you and help you. So just as Jesus was helping them, the Holy Spirit will continue that help. He will come alongside you. He will be in you to help. But look at verse 18 now. For Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. What well, Jesus has just said, he's going away. He's going and he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And now we read in verse 18 that he says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to come to you and that he will be in us. And not only he, but we read as well that God the Father will be in us as well. For Jesus says in verse 23, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus has said, I'm going away, I'm sending the Holy Spirit, but now he's saying, I'm coming to you, I'm going to be in you, and the Father is going to be in you. How do we understand that? Well, I don't understand it fully, nor can I, nor can anyone else. But let me try my best to shed some light on this. The Holy Spirit indwells every believer, okay? In fact, the Bible teaches that you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit in you. Read John, uh, Romans uh, chapter 8. The Holy Spirit is in every believer. Now we ask the question, who is the Holy Spirit? Well, we just said he's God, isn't he? The third member of the Trinity. We ask the question, who is God? And we answer, he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit lives in you, God lives in you. For God is one being and three persons. You can't separate God. He is one God. You can't separate God. And each member of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, well, they live in each other. Earlier in the chapter, Jesus says to Philip in John 14, 11, Believe me, Philip asks, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And Jesus replies with these words, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And Jesus says, Whoever seen the Father, whoever seen me, rather, has seen the Father. <coughs> The Father is in Jesus, Jesus is in the Father, the Holy Spirit is in the Father, the Father is in the Holy Spirit, and so on. Theologians call this the doctrine of perichoresis. Peri meaning around, and koren meaning to give way or to make room. Professor Donald MacLeod, in his book, Behold Your God, says this about it, and I quote him, In God, it is possible for each person to be in, almost inside the other, in a unique intensity of mutuality. End of quote. You see, each person in the Trinity shares in the life of the other. I hope that helps a, a, a little bit. Because as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you. 
And that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 16 do, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? And so this takes me back to the verse that led me to preach from this passage today. Verse 23, Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. As I said at the beginning, they say there's no place like home. Well, I hope that today, after thinking about this verse, you will realize something of the awesomeness, the awesome reality that God is right there with you in your home. Not only in your physical building, but within your physical body. God wants to dwell with you. More than that, God does live inside of you. Maybe you live alone. Maybe you're the only one in your house today. Well, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are not alone. You are never alone. You are not an orphan. Jesus said, I'll never leave you as an orphan because God lives in your house. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a temple for His Spirit. The God, yes, the God who, who fills the universe, who fills heaven, also fills you, His child. He's made His abode with you. That's what Jesus is saying. We're making our home with you. That means you're never alone and you're never out of the presence of God because God has taken up residency with you through faith in Jesus. And you know, it's, it's an assured tenancy because it's forever. Oh, sure, we grieve the Holy Spirit and we quench His fire and presence in us. And we, when we do these things, we must repent but oh, how slow we are at times to do that. We quench his presence. But he's still there. Because he'll never leave you. He will never leave your house. Your temple. Friends. You don't live with people you don't want to be with. But Jesus says here, my Father will love you and we will make our home with you. And that is what you got the day you believed in Jesus. The day you repented of your sins and put your trust in Jesus, God made his home with you. It's not because we were special, or somehow we deserved it. No, this was the gift of God that comes through believing in Jesus. God set his love on you and came to dwell with you. Let me say this too. At the beginning of this chapter, Jesus told us in John 14, that in his father's house were many rooms. And he said that he was going to prepare a place for his disciples. And if he was going there, he was going to come back and he was going to take them to be with him where he is. In the father's house. Well, the Lord has prepared a place for you, a room for you, a house for you. But right now, he dwells in your home, your temple. 
A place, friends, is a place in the presence of God and the presence of God in you. And let me say this too. When we get to our Father's house, God will still dwell in your house because it's forever. Only then it will be a billion times greater because there's going to be no sin to quench his spirit. You won't sin anymore on that day. And you will see him with your eyes. You will see the Lord with your eyes and you and know him within you in ways you can't begin to imagine now. But friends, now you know him because he is with you and in you forever. You see, every believer is in constant, unending, eternal communion with the triune God. I want you to grasp that today and let it fill your hearts with joy and love and appreciation and just absolute delight that you would worship him for this amazing concept that the triune God lives in you and will be with you forever. But I close with this. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to his followers. But he said this about those who were not his followers. In verse 17 of chapter 14, the world cannot receive, can't receive the Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. If, you're, if you are, are not a, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, then what I've been talking about is something you have no experience of or, 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 or don't know about. Because God doesn't live in you. You are outside of God. And I don't say that lightly or arrogantly. And I hope that doesn't come across like that because... That's not my intention. I say it with, with, with love and concern. As I was thinking about this, I, I really thought about, about this. And I thought, well, I long for people to know God. I want everyone to know God. And so I say it with love and I say it with concern in my heart because I know that God has set a day when he's going to judge this world. And without God, we are without hope on that day. I want you to know this God. With all my heart, I want you to know this God. And the thing is, the thing is, you can know Him. And you can experience all that I've been talking about today, all that we've been thinking about in God's Word. And the reason you can is because this same God who saved me can save you as well. He can graciously save you because he is merciful. He is gracious. He is kind. And he will save any who come to him. But here's the thing. You have to confess your sins to him. You have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who died and, and who rose again for the salvation of sinners. You see, Jesus says in John fourteen twenty three, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And we will come to him and make our home with him. What is it to keep God's word? The Bible says it's this, to believe 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's God's commandment. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. God wants to dwell with you. In fact, this is the reason we were made to know God, to dwell with Him. Do you want to dwell with God? Do you want Him to dwell with you? Then I simply say this, come. Come to His Son, Jesus, in faith. Give your life over to Him. Friends, there is no place like home. And God is the home we were created to dwell in, to live in, and He in us. Let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you that right now you are with us. Lord, sometimes we we just glance over your word and without too much thought. But I pray today that, Lord, we would, by the Spirit, we would really take into heart what your word is teaching us. And your word would just transform our whole experience. That right now we would know that Almighty God lives in me and I in him. What a blessing. What a joy to know that God loves me, that God has made his abode with me, made his home with me. Thank you, God. Because this is your gracious gift to us in Jesus Christ. Nothing we have deserved, nothing we have earned, but some, simply something that's been given to us. And Lord, I pray that those who have been listening to this and who is in their heart to say, I want this, that they may know it, Lord, as they come in faith to your Son, Jesus, that they too will know him, the Spirit, for he is with them and he will dwell in those who believe. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me... um, Uh, Just close with the, the benediction. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.